So a month is a long time in financial markets. After the peak lockdown and distress of March, there finally seems to be some light at the end of the tunnel as restrictions in various cities and countries are being eased. In this update, I wanna provide you with comments on two companies that are in our portfolio, both heavily involved with COVID-19 in terms of how we are operating in this environment. But before that, a few comments on things we've seen during the month. First of all, as predicted, there's been a huge amount of equity raised as companies with too much debt struggle to service that debt with very little, and in some cases, like hotels, zero income. And as a consequence, there's been a large number of dividend cuts as well. When I look at the performance over the month, it's really been a very similar tale to that that we've seen over the last one, two, even three years. The strong getting stronger, think logistics and data centers, and then the weak getting weaker, think retail. And we've seen this in rental collection statistics over the quarter and the month as well, with some shopping centre owners collecting as little as 30% of their rents versus almost 100% collection rate in things like data centres. One of the interesting anecdotes for me over the month was seeing a purchaser walk away from a £21 million deposit for a retail transaction. They had obviously become so bearish that they thought they would lose far more than that if they completed the transaction. Another interesting thing that we're seeing over the month is the whole working from home adoption. We've seen the Morgan Stanley CEO come out saying that he saw a future for the bank with far less real estate. And then we saw a Gartner survey of CFOs saying that two thirds of them saw that they would be moving a number of employees to work from home on a permanent basis. We think this trend is going to be adopted very fast and we think this has to have an impact on demand in the office subsector. The first company I want to mention is Alexandria Real Estate. It's the second largest holding we have in the Global Cities Fund, and they own life science assets, which to you and me are laboratories. So this is exactly where biology and technology fuses together to look for cures of viruses and diseases and create drugs. So you can only imagine the type of work and demand that there is today for space in life science assets. Now, the reason why I wanted to mention Alexandria is because one of their largest tenants is a company called Moderna. Now, you may not know this, but since January this year, there have been three companies in the world carrying out vaccine research on humans. Two of those are in America and one of those is in China. And one of those American companies is Moderna. And you can see from this image exactly where their headquarters is on Alexandria's campus in Cambridge, Boston, which is effectively the medical research capital of the world. So what we think will happen post COVID is that whilst this sector was seeing very strong structural demand before COVID, we think that only increases after COVID as governments and pharmaceutical companies increase their research budgets, therefore leading to strong demand for the life science sector. The second company I want to speak about is a data centre company. So we can't travel at the moment, but it is absolutely essential that data can. If you think about defence agencies, emergency services, medical research facilities, they are all using data that goes through data centres. And this is why these assets are referred to as being mission critical. Similar to the life science sector in Alexandria, before COVID-19, this subsector was having very, very strong demand because of structural trends the creation of data. So as an example of that, in 2013, the 10 largest leasing deals on average saw demand for about seven megawatts. Fast forward to 2018, and those 10 largest leasing deals has now grown to 24 megawatts. We think that rate of growth will continue. We're seeing users like Zoom increase dramatically because of COVID-19. In December 2019, they had a mere 10 million users. Today, that's 200 million users. And this is where a company like Next DC comes into play. So this is in our portfolio. And you can see from this slide, the assets that they have around the key cities in Australia. Now I mentioned at the beginning of the update that a number of companies have been raising equity for defensive purposes. The reason why I wanted to speak about Next DC is because they raised equity over the month, but certainly not for defensive reasons. They've got a strong balance sheet. What they want to do is raise equity to enable them to build out their development pipeline and take advantage of this increasing demand for data centers. They want to build out sites like you can see from this aerial image of this asset of theirs that they own in Sydney. 
Now, when we spoke to management over the month to speak through their uh, plans for the equity that they were raising, one of the interesting points for me was when they were talking about companies and their contingency plans. They estimated that before COVID-19, companies were allowing maybe 10 to 20 percent of workers to be able to work from home in terms of the capacity that they had in data centres. They believe that contingency planning post COVID-19 is going to enable up to 100 percent of employees to be able to work from home. So therefore, this is not going to be a one off spike in demand. They see very long term structural reasons for strength of demand in this subsector. So this is another reason why we're so optimistic with regard to the future for next DC. So in conclusion, what is our outlook? So the duration and length of COVID-19 is unknown, whether restrictions continue to ease or we get a second wave. But what we do know is two key points. Firstly, the benefits of diversification. As we can see, different cities and countries move out of this crisis at a different speed. And then secondly, all COVID-19 is doing is accelerating existing trends that are in the market, working from home, e-commerce, creation of data and the demand for data centres. All of these trends were going to be taking place over the next 5, 10, 15 years. What we think will happen is that they're going to take place much faster over a much shorter time period. And that's why the Global Cities Fund is positioned in these subsectors with structurally strong demand.